This video will look at the time trajectory of a harmonic oscillator particle in classical mechanics. So we built our quantum mechanical model for the harmonic oscillator in the previous video that our potential energy function V of x equals 1 half kx squared. So x is the displacement away from the equilibrium bond distance. It's r minus r naught, the bond distance minus the equilibrium bond distance where we have two atoms and they're separated by some bond distance r. So the force that's felt by any individual atom is a force which restores it towards the minimum energy position. So f of x is the negative first derivative of the potential with respect to x. So as the potential goes up on either side of zero, zero displacement away from equilibrium, the potential is the negative derivative the, for, the forces, I should say, forces the negative derivative of potential, pushing it back towards that minimum energy location. So minus dv dx is minus d dx of 1 half kx squared, and that is going to be 2 kx times 1 half times minus 1, which is negative kx. <clears throat> so the force is getting linearly bigger as this displacement gets bigger and bigger. We also know from Newton's second law that force equals mass times acceleration, where acceleration is the second derivative of x with respect to time. So we have negative kx, the force, equals mass times d squared x dt squared. So now we have the second derivative with of x with respect to t is equal to, we divide both sides by m, we have negative km over x. So we have a differential equation here where we have the second derivative of a function equals a negative constant times the function. So this should look familiar because we've seen it before in the classical wave equation. So we'll define this constant omega to be the square root of k over m. So x of t is going to be a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t. That's a standard trick from any ordinary differential, ordinary differential equations course. Okay, so that's our general solution for the time trajectory of the harmonic oscillator. But in order to specify the specific uh, solution that we want, we specify what are called initial conditions. We're going to specify what the initial position is and what the initial velocity is. So let's assume that our initial velocity, so v at t equals 0, which is the first derivative of x evaluated at t equals 0, equals 0. So we're going to start off with our particle somewhere along this curve, but it's going to be sitting still. All right, so we're going to have dx dt equals, well, we take the derivative of this with respect to time. a cosine omega t gives us minus a omega sine omega t b sine omega t is going to give us b omega cosine omega t. We have to set this equal to 0, so substitute in for t equals 0. The sine of 0 is 0, so this term goes away. The cosine of 0 is 1, so b times omega has to equal 0. Well, omega is our spring constant k, the second derivative or the curvature of this parabola, so we don't want that to be 0. We could also make omega 0 by setting the mass equal to infinity, but uh, that doesn't seem particularly useful since we're interested in uh, quantum behavior in this course. So uh, we're going to get no quantum behavior if our mass is infinite. So looks like we need to set b equal to 0. Okay, so b is going to be equal to 0. So this means that only a is going to be non-zero. So x of t is going to equal a cosine omega t. So a is what we refer to as the amplitude of our function here. Wherever we start out, that's the amplitude. That's the maximum value that our displacement gets to. And x is going to oscillate between minus a and a. And omega, in cosine omega t, is what is referred to as the angular velocity of this function. So if we plot this function over time, we start out at a, we go uh, pi over omega seconds into the future, and we're at negative a. 
We go two pi over omega and we're back to positive a. We've completed a full rotation around the cosine function. And then it's just oscillating back and forth over time as we go. So this is the trajectory of our harmonic oscillator uh, function in classical mechanics. So there are a few analogs that we're going to use in the quantum mechanical system to kind of rationalize the ideas here. So most important is this angular velocity here, this omega being the square root of k, our spring constant over m, our mass. This is going to show up in the, in the quantum system as well, and it's analogous that these are the two factors that determine how fast our system is oscillating back and forth.